Mr. Vulcan, what brings you here? I've got a few questions I'd like to ask about this village. I imagine there are few who are better placed than myself to answer them. How come it's you that's running the show here? <laughs> what a question. Because, my friend, someone has to. You imagine I'm doing this for my amusement, perhaps? Doubtless you wish it were someone else. The Chief of the Watch has trouble organizing three peasants. Our dear Apothecary is evidently keen to give succor to any and every poor soul who wanders into the Healing House. And regardless of your reputation, the people of this village would never trust outsiders such as yourself, or even the Red Scribes. So yes, it is indeed I who command here, the one-time steward of the hunting lodge of Valvanor, now leader of this... shithole. Well, hell. I'm glad we got that cleared up. What can you tell me about the people of Valvanor? Before the war, there were just a few families here. Hunters and craftsmen, mostly. These days, they survive as best they can, husbanding their animals and digging up the puny vegetables they've managed to grow. Few dare to venture outside the walls. These woods are fruitful, but more perilous than ever before, and most of these folk know nothing of arms. But you've got your guards. They hardly qualify as an armed militia. Of the few that remain, most are sturdy farmers whom we have entrusted with some kind of weapon. Most of the real fighters left the village as soon as war broke out. The others died while out on patrol. The only one left here with any real experience is Mason, the head of the guard. Sadly, the man is a walking beer keg who could not give a dog's fart for what his men are about. Who are all those refugees that you're keeping outside the walls? The war with the Ice Lords has driven many from their homes and villages. Alas, it would seem that some of them found their way here. I have tried to accommodate as many as we can, and provide as much comfort as possible, but I fear we can do little more. We are reaching the end of our reserves, and relations between the refugees and the villagers are becoming strained. The refugees can all be dead weight. Some of them have got to be useful. Oh, if only. Believe me, I would be the first to welcome them. These peasants have been fleeing from town to town and from camp to camp for months. The best and strongest of them perished in battles somewhere along the way. I must deal with the leftovers. I put the biggest of them in the watch, but they are of little use. The Healing House. It's a pretty good thing for your village, huh? If you say so. As time has gone by, the Healing House has drawn refugees to the swamps in ever greater numbers, and dissuaded some malingerers from returning to their families. When it opened its doors a year ago, the sense of relief was palpable. It was run by a couple, an elf doctor and his apothecary wife, who clearly were no strangers to the healing arts. Thanks to them, we were spared many plagues. But, as the war dragged on, the endless tide of refugees continued to flow through our gates until we could harbor no more. Six months ago, our worst nightmares were fulfilled. Our elf doctor fell ill and died. Since then, Mirana has soldiered on without rest, alone. I do not know how much longer she can keep going. The refugees just keep on coming, and I fear that poor woman is beginning to crumble under the strain. It's not surprising. I need a blacksmith. Do you have one here? With none more qualified, I asked Asiel to take over the village fort. I suppose I should warn you, he's quite a tricky character. He has a huge ego and is stubborn as an ox. Before the war, he was a sort of artist. He crafted jewelry and sculptures from metal. Despite running the forge, one could hardly call him a blacksmith. But he's the only one here who had even the vaguest notion of how to repair a shovel or straighten a blade. <laughs> 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 
The captain wants me to help your village. You got a job I can do? With our shortages of food and fighting men, our worn-out equipment and the growing lines at the healing house, I cannot deny our village is sorely in need of help. Sadly, I fear that these are not the sort of problems you are used to dealing with, unless I'm much mistaken. Maybe I'll surprise you. I need the reports about this beast that attacked the villagers. I fear I am unable to be of help. I'm still not entirely convinced that it even exists. All I know is that several villagers have vanished. One villager is at present in the doctor's care, following a supposed encounter with the said beast. These swamps are crawling with dangers. There is nothing to suggest anything out of the ordinary. The refugees are always inventing horror stories in an attempt to force us to open our gates and let them inside. It might be worth checking it out. You said you lost one of your patrols, right? That is so. You should speak with Randvol. He was most anxious to go out and hunt the beast down, but we needed him here. Now that we have more able bodies to guard our gates, I imagine he would be keen to pick up the scent once more. Your guards... How can I put this? At first, I thought they were disobeying orders. Now I think maybe they don't even understand them. If you're stupid and incompetent, you should be digging turnips, not taking care of security. You're beginning to worry me. Is it really that bad? Are you kidding me? The state of their weapons is enough to make you cry. Maybe they'd be good for splitting logs. Personally, I'm not capable of judging the aptitude of our sentries, but their poor results speak for themselves. Doubtless, you should share your observations with Mason, the Chief of the Watch. I should warn you, however, that he is of a somewhat stubborn nature. Wouldn't be the first I've seen. So what's the problem with the Healing House? Quite simply, Mirana cannot keep up. She spends every waking minute giving out supplies to the refugees and refuses to admit that she cannot help everyone. She thinks she's fooling me. I have heard rumors that her food stock is running low. Unsurprisingly, the crowds outside are becoming restless. I believe they wish to continue handing out our food reserves as though they were unlimited. This is not the case, and thus, it is not an option. So, you want someone to put her down? Why, I never suggested any such thing. I just wish she would see reason, for all our sakes. But I have asked nothing of you. I was merely answering your question. We'll talk again later. Mercenary? Tell me more about your order. Before the war, our main objective in Creed was to collect and save all kinds of knowledge. We had a presence everywhere on the continent, and had chapters in every major city. 
We studied and preserved all possible sources of knowledge there. We also dispensed information and care. Because even though we're not the greatest magicians, our knowledge let us come to the aid of the wounded and the sick. I could, of course, relate our history in detail for hours and hours, but I doubt that is really what interests you. With all the knowledge accumulated by your scribes, you must have learned something about the Ice Lords, surely. We do indeed know some of their secrets, and a good part of their history. Anything we could use to find them? We thought we'd found a chink in their powers that our ritual was supposed to let us exploit. But you saw the result. That's one way of putting it. That said, I'm beginning to wonder if we haven't involuntarily brought about the conditions for their end. I'm not following you. What you have within you could well turn out to be their doom. Even if I don't have the faintest idea of how or why. And unfortunately, as long as we don't know more about it, we also have to fear that it might lead to our doom, too. Can I do something for you? No, thank you. I don't need anything for the moment. According to the villagers, there's a beast haunting the swamp, and it's attacked them several times. I have heard about it, yes. And although I don't have any concrete information about the creature, there are some things that corroborate what they say. Even though we aren't very good at magic, we still feel it. And since we came to the swamp, we have all felt a powerful source nearby. The problem is that the source seems distorted, corrupted, Kind of like the one the Ice Lords use, only not the same. I hope for our sake you're right about that. Otherwise we're really up shit creek. We are very certain of it. But this magic could very well have transformed one or more creatures in the swamp, making them more aggressive, bigger. Who knows? Something to frighten the villagers, in any case. So you're telling me the thing is magic and corrupted? Brilliant. Just what I needed. I need your help. I'll be going now. Greetings, mercenary. What can I do for you? I have some questions I'd like to ask you. Who's the big snoring elf? Show some respect, please. That's Prince Arundel. And? He's the son of the Elven King, leader of the last army standing against the Deadwalkers. Yeah, okay. But he doesn't exactly look like he's ready to stand against anything just now. What's wrong with him? From what I've been told, Relmar brought him here before we arrived. The Prince and his men fell in an ambush. Without your friend, he wouldn't have made it out. Unfortunately, he was severely wounded, and has probably been the victim of powerful magic. I'm trying to find a cure, but without much success for the moment. Do you have any idea about what's happening to me? I'm afraid I may not be able to help you. Your condition is more due to magic than medicine. Your symptoms remind me of certain mental illnesses, where the subject has the impression he hears voices in his head. And do these nutcases throw fire and have eyes that burn from within, too? 
you'd be surprised at what they can do. But obviously, you're not like them. That being the case, if you study them, you might find some answers. In particular, I'm thinking of the fact that most of these poor madmen end up giving free reign to the darkest side of their personalities. Make sure that doesn't happen to you. Can I have a look at your stock? Vulcan, you must help me. The Prince is dying. Well, I'm happy to see that my talents as a doctor are finally being recognized. There's no doubt an explosion would cure him of all his ills forever. But I was actually thinking about your connections with the Red Scribes. If you could speak to them, it would save me having the Prince's death on my conscience. I wouldn't exactly call myself a friend of theirs. But yeah, I can always give it a try. I need your expertise. Will you come with me? Of course I will. Lead the way. Elmar, you got a minute? Yes. I have a few questions I need to ask you. Elves are pretty rare. I haven't had the chance to talk to many. Can you tell me more about your people? We are born in the trees eat only seeds, and we spend all the live-long day singing. I get the feeling you're fucking with me. Perish the thought. Well, it's just that we aren't that different from you humans, despite what one hears. Our civilization is obviously a bit older, so we have had the time to learn from our mistakes. We don't really live in the same rhythm as you do. We move a little slower, and most of us are prone to having at least some respect for the past. This is the reason why we never destroy anything that we prefer to build on top of things. I've heard that you are immortal. That joke has lived for 15 generations. I will never get tired of it. No, we're not immortal. We live long lives, though, much longer than you. We are resistant to poisons, rotten food, 
and toxic body odour, apparently. Unfortunately, these things do not make us immortal. Don't elves ever make war? That's an impression we like to give other people. The fact is, we do go to war, just never against each other. You must understand that, given our long lifetimes, battles are fairly futile. This may well be what has motivated the choices of our king concerning the Ice Lords. But we certainly know how to fight, and you'll see proof of that soon enough. So it's the prince who gives the orders? The word orders may not be the best one. We do not submit nor obey easily. Our kings are a reference, wise men who can point out the way. They tend to guide us rather than give us orders. But to answer your question, it is his father the king who is the leader of our people. Who is the elf in the healing house? Is he really your prince? He is Prince Arundel the son of our king and heir to the elven crown. Therefore, yes, he is our king. How the hell did he end up here? Prince Arundel led a detachment of the elven army sent to harass the Deadwalkers. And when he reached Bastion, he fell into an ambush. I got wind of this trap, but by the time I arrived, it was too late. When I caught up to the prince, he was already wounded, and most of his soldiers were dead. Those who survived covered our retreat. To here? Yes. The route to Carolthas was too dangerous. I knew about this village and felt that it would be secure for at least a little while. As soon as he gets better, we shall leave for Carolthas. The remainder of the human and elven armies are gathering there. That is where the final stage of the war will be played out. You seem different from the other elves I've met. Where are you from? Really, I seem different. And yet I have such pointy ears. And if you really want to know, I actually come from one of the most ancient and noble houses that exists. I'm even linked to the royal family. But I can assure you that I'm sufficiently far down the line of succession to be in no danger of being crowned. And my reputation is no help either. As far as bad reputations go, every mercenary has got one, so we're used to it. Let's just say that I got into enough trouble to eventually be considered a traitor to my people. When I got involved in the war, I disagreed with decisions made by the king. He thought that this war, like so many others, would not last. That the conquests won by the Ice Lords would melt away like all the human victories before them had. But I thought differently. Right from the start of hostilities, I began to... requisition certain resources I felt necessary for those doing the fighting. More food, more weapons, better armor. When my people discovered what I'd done, I was declared an outlaw, and many saw me as a thief, which, in a manner of speaking, I guess I was. What a bunch of cowards. If they had listened to you, we wouldn't be in this mess. I've been telling myself that for years. But I do understand their point of view. It is flawed, but not entirely thoughtless. They have had some time to prepare their forces and to learn the strengths and weaknesses of the Deadwalker army. This knowledge might allow us to turn the tide of the war, even if it does seem too little too late at this point. Do you know these swamps? I've been in this area long enough to have explored a fair amount of it, actually. The region is rather inhospitable, which I suppose is a good thing under the present circumstances. A good thing? You're out of your mind. These swamps are a labyrinth. The Deadwalker Scouts will never be autonomous enough to find their way to the village by themselves. That means we should be fairly safe for the moment. At least until a general or an Ice Lord comes to town. Except that recently, there has been a change in these swamplands. And I must admit that I no longer feel safe at all. What do you mean? Something is affecting the swamplands, corrupting the vegetation and the animals. And I have no idea what it is. But anything that grows or lives here could become a threat. So I strongly recommend that you watch where you put your feet. Let's change the subject. Let's move on.
Sybil, can I talk to you? Yes? I need your help. Come with me. If you want. Sybil, can I talk to you? Yes? We need to talk about your combat style. What do you want me to do? I know you want to help me, but you gotta stay alive to do that. Think of defending yourself a little. You're right. I will try to be more careful. <laughs> 